Hi everyone, I am on a journey to build a complete 3D game engine from scratch and I am doing it in Go. Today, we are diving deep into the heart of it, the rendering pipeline of my game engine. We will see how our scene comes together and the clever tricks that make it run in real time. By the way, who am I? Let me give you my quick introduction. My name is Nilesh. I am a software architect with 15 plus years of experience in VFX and gaming. Creating a 3D application and a custom game engine has always been my dream. On this channel, I share my journey of building a game engine from scratch while exploring graphic programming, rendering and software designing. If you are interested in game engine development, graphics programming, UI frameworks, building tools for games, VFX, 3D application, then you are in the right place. Subscribe and follow along as we explore software development ideas, practical coding tips and the behind the scenes process of creating a game engine from scratch. And let's just start our today's topic from here. Everything starts with the scene. Think of it as a master coordinator, the stage manager for our entire 3D world. It holds three critical components. Assets, camera and the renderer. The camera. This is our perspective into the world. It handles the complex math of transferring 3D points into 2D screen space. It manages the first term that pyramid of what's actually visible, which is crucial for culling things we don't need to draw. The lights are sun, point lights and directional lights. They are not just colors, they hold transforms, intensity and most importantly, they manage their own shadow maps, which we will get into it in a bit. Next, the assembly. An assembly is like a game object. It can be a tree, a rock or an entire building. It contains geometries, the actual meshes and can even reference other assemblies can create a powerful hierarchy. Now that we are aware about three components of our scene, let's see how the render happens. Before any rendering happens, the scene's update method is called. This is the hard bit. It updates every component ensuring all transforms are correct and everything is in its right place for the frame to render. Now meet the renderer. This is the artist. It holds all the buffers. The frame buffer for colors, the depth buffer to handle overlapping objects correctly, and the buffers for shadows and post processing effects like fog. It also has all the switches that controls how we render our normals, how we render our fog, and so on. The magic starts with the render triangle function. For every visible triangle, this function is called. It checks if the triangle actually inside the camera's view. If it's behind us or outside the first term, it gets thrown away immediately. This is called as first term calling, and it's a huge performance win. Well, qualifies it gets sent to the next rasterization triangle function. This is the core. It's like the artist's brush that takes a 3D triangle and paints it onto the 2D screen. It finds the triangle's corners, figure out its bonding box and then fills it in pixel by pixel. For each pixel, it calculates the depth and checks the z-buffer. If the pixel is closest, when we have seen so far, we draw it. This is what makes objects correctly hide behind each other. But the flat triangle is boring. This is where lighting calculation comes in. This function is like a shining spotlight on the painted triangle. Real color checks if there is a texture and uses the surface normal to calculate how much light from each source hits that exact pixel. It adds up the ambient light, diffuse shading and specular highlights. And for shadows, we use shadow mapping. Before the main render, each light that casts shadow renders the entire scene from its own perspective into a depth only image. Then, when calculating lighting for a pixel, we ask the light, from your point of view, is this pixel in a shadow? If something else is closer to the light, we darken the pixel. This is what creates those realistic shadows you see. So, the entire loop looks like this. We update the scene, clear the buffers, render the shadow map, and for each triangle, we calculate the transform, we rasterize it, we lit it, and then write it to frame buffer. This happens for thousands of triangles every frame. And to make it fast, we use Go's killer future Go routines. We spin up worker pool to process triangles in parallel, saturating all the CPU cores. And that's it. From the hierarchy of assemblies in a scene, through the mathematical lens of the camera, we finally brought life to our image with lighting and shadows. It's sudden of code, but seeing it all come together to render a complex scene in real time is incredibly rewarding. If you want to deep dive into how we manage the asset and geometries, please let me know in the comments. You can find the complete code for this project on my github, link in the description. If you have enjoyed this video, 
hit that like button and subscribe for more developed content. Thanks for watching. I will see you in next one.